Hey there, welcome to Violet's DIY Style. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Violet, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made this Wayfair inspired home decor piece that's farmhouse style. What you're going to need first is basically one of these metal wreaths that you can get at Dollar Tree, and it's the square shape one. And you're going to need a poster board or cardboard box. Now you're going to go ahead and place your metal reef on top of your board and you're going to trace it out. And as you can see, I just made it a little bit larger than my actual reef itself. Then you're going to get a ruler or anything that um, the size that you want your strips to be. I'm using this L-shaped ruler and I'm going to use the smallest part of it to make my strips. Now this is about a half an inch in thickness. Um, I wanted to make sure that my piece looked as close as possible to the Wayfair inspired piece that I had um, looked at to get inspiration from. But if you want to make it thicker or uh, thinner, feel free to make your strips any size you like and as many as you like. Um, but again, I went ahead and just used 14 just to make sure that it looked as much as possible as my inspiration. Now I have made a tobacco basket using a poster board that you might be interested in watching that tutorial as well. And I'll make sure to leave that link at the end of this tutorial for you to go ahead and check that one out as well. So once you're done cutting out, I'm sorry, tracing out all your strips, go ahead and get a cardboard um, X-Acto knife or some scissors and cut out each one of your strips. Now, once you're done cutting out all of your strips, what you're going to need is some aluminum foil. Um, I just used the roll of aluminum foil, but if I was to do this again, I would probably purchase the individual um, aluminum foil wraps. Um, I believe you can even get them at Dollar Tree as well, but I would use those because I think it would go a lot faster, but um, I just used what I had, so I used the roll of aluminum foil. What you're going to do is just get a strip of the aluminum foil. And I tried to figure out how and which way was the easiest way for me to um, wrap each one of these individual um, strips with the aluminum foil. Um, the first one, you'll see that I just cut out a piece of the aluminum foil, double the size of my strip itself. And I think this would have gone a lot easier, like I said, if you would have gotten, or if I would have gotten the strips from um, individual wrapping strips, but I didn't. So if you want to do it that way, just go ahead and cut out 14 of those strips and then wrap them around each one of your um, strips, the cardboard strips. But I thought it would be faster if I just went ahead and got my spray adhesive sprayed each one of my strips of um, poster board and then wrapped it around my aluminum foil and then cut out that extra piece of um, aluminum foil and just continue using it until I was completely done wrapping each one of my strips. So you can do it um, quite a few different ways and whichever way works for you, whichever way is easiest for you, go ahead and do it. The goal is just to wrap each one of these strips um, with your aluminum foil. Now, I've used aluminum foil in previous projects, so don't be scared um, to use it. Just make sure you do use um, adhesive spray in order for you to attach it to whatever your project's going to be um, because I've used hot glue, I've used E6000, and it doesn't work the same. Um, so just go ahead and make sure you use some spray adhesive in order for you to attach your aluminum foil to your cardboard uh, pieces for this tutorial. But again, just go ahead and continue wrapping each one of your um, poster board strips with your aluminum foil. I have used um, like the disposable baking sheets um, for to make some kind of inspired metal pieces before, 
but I wanted this piece to be sturdy and thick enough for it to stand because it is a piece that you put on a stand and I didn't want it to be too flimsy. That's why I decided to use um, poster board or some cardboard because I wanted it to be thick enough and sturdy enough for it not to, you know, flop around or fall like it would if it was a poster board. But if you have any other suggestions of what we can use, let us all know in the comments down below. We love to learn together and work together to figure out the easiest way to do any tutorial. So next, once you're done wrapping all your uh, strips with the aluminum foil, what you're going to do is basically cut out um, with some pliers that square um, reef form and you can use any size of those reef uh, metal forms. As you can see, there's three of them on there. I decided to use the largest one and I just cut, again, just cut it out with some pliers. Now I'm going to add some hot glue to one side of my metal strip and I'm going to attach the end of my um, first strip onto that piece. And if you don't feel comfortable just using hot glue, feel free to add some E6000 or maybe um, any kind of permanent glue that you want to. But the hot glue did work perfectly fine on this piece. So again, just add a little bit of hot glue down that strip and then you're gonna cut, um, add that one strip down the side. So now, once you're done with both sides, go ahead and get three more of the strips and kind of, evenly space them out going the same way you just add attached to your first strips and then you're going to glue them on to your metal piece and i'm using this reform in order for it to give it the shape that i want and make sure that it all stays nice and even but if you don't have that you can easily make um this with just the cardboard box uh, strips and just make your square first and then co continue adding the middle strips. But um, I just use the metal form to give me my shape to make sure that everything stayed nice and in place. So once you're done adding your first four, um, I'm sorry, five strips, the same way you're going to go the opposite way. But in order to go the opposite way, what you're going to do first is you're going to attach both ends of your strips first. So just go ahead and attach them to the very back bottom of your um, already pieces that are attached to your square. And just glue it on to your uh, strips. Then you're going to do the same to the opposite side. And don't worry about those corners. You're going to have a gap, but don't worry about them. They're going to be covered and I'll show you how in just a moment. So just add your hot glue to each one of the strips that are already attached to your metal frame. And then you're going to attach that second strip to the opposite side. Now what you're going to do is you're going to weave these other strips um, across the strips that are already attached to your piece. So just go um, under and over, under and over. And as you can see, I'm moving this around and it's staying nice and in place with the hot glue. So just go ahead and continue doing that to your next three strips, which is over and under, over and under. And then you're going to go opposite um, with the second strip, which will be um, over and under. And then the next one will be under and over. There you go. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to say that, but yeah, just go ahead and go under and over and then over and under. Um, just make sure they're opposite just like a basket and then once you're done adding all three of your strips in the middle just go ahead and space them out make sure you they are where you want them to be and then you're just going to add glue to each one of these strips um, and all the areas that you'd like for them to attach to your uh, piece itself so I kind of just glue added glue to all the little um, square pieces where they attach to another strip, if that makes sense. But just go ahead and make sure that you do attach it to the front and back, all the strips. The hardest part of this, to, of this uh, project was 
wrapping each one of these strips but that's not very hard at all it just a little bit time consuming but that basically was the hardest part um after this it's easy breezy you're just gonna start gluing everything together and uh, having fun with your creation so once you're done adding all your weave pieces what you're going to do is make a square i'm sorry an x in the center of your basket now the way i did it was i used two for one side and then two for the opposite side just like this and how i glued them was the same way i glued everything else with my hot glue gun and these pieces are the ones that are going to cover that corner piece that gap that we left when we glued all our surrounding pieces together so just go ahead and add some hot glue to each one of those corners and then you're going to attach that one strip to that corner to cover up everything um, to make it look like an exact square box then you're going to get some scissors or a box cutter and you're going to cut that extra piece off of that strip to make sure that your piece is right in the center what you're trying to do is form that x um, and make sure all your strips are in the center so it can actually look um, like that was put together that way so again, just attach your strip to the corner, making sure you cover that extra gap and then just cut out or cut off any of that extra strip that you don't need. And I think this, I made this more farmhouse style, but if you wanted to leave it all silver um, or even spray paint it gold or white, I think it would look really pretty in a modern home. Um, very, it's like a structure piece, um, or you can even use it in say like a bohemian style and just add uh, spray paint it the terracotta color. So this has a lot of different ways you can use it um, Let me know in the comments below how you're going to style yours again. I'm styling mine the farmhouse style So once you're done adding all four of your strips Go ahead and cut off any of that extra pieces that you don't need in the center to form that X And then once you're done cutting all four of them, this is the way it's going to look. Now we're going to attach all four of them to the center just by adding some hot glue. And if you want to add it to the rest of your pieces, you can, but I just glued the, uh, basically the top and bottom of each one of these strips. And to cover that center piece, all I'm going to do is get one of those extra pieces that I already cut off cut it to the shape that I want to cover that little square in the center. And I'm going to glue it onto the top of all four of my um, X form. And there you have it. Now, since I wanted it to look more like a basket, what I did was basically start moving um, all my strips down to make it kind of like a, a indent, I guess you could say, to make it look more like a basket. I wanted to have it more um, structure and I wanted it to look more 3D style. So this is what I did. I basically just started working with it, moving everything around, kind of pushing all the corners down um, to make it look like a basket shape. Not too much. I didn't want it too much, but I did want it to have some kind of structure and for it to have that indent in the middle to make it look like a dome shape. So once you're done and you're happy with that, you can go ahead and set that aside. And you're going to get one of these signs. Um, there's quite a few different ones. This one just says something like happy fall, um, but there's quite a few of them. My first thoughts were I was going to use these um, like ninja swords from the Dollar Tree at the toy department, but I really didn't like the way they looked once I started playing with it. So what I decided to do was grab these Easter um, garden hooks that I had with these bunnies, remove the bunny, and they always have these. They don't necessarily have to be the Easter ones. They always have garden um, 
decor in that area so just go ahead and look for something that has these metal strips on them then what i did was kind of figure out where i wanted to place them on my stand and also where i wanted to place them on my basket now i wanted to make sure that they were on the not the very last strip but the middle strip right there and make sure that they were going to be in that area so i could glue them onto my actual uh, tobacco basket piece then I just drew a line where I needed to place them onto my stand itself. Flipped over my metal piece and now I'm going to glue those metal strips onto those um, my home decor piece. And again, if you don't feel comfortable just using hot glue, make sure you get some E6000 or some kind of permanent glue. Um, but it worked just fine and it stays just fine with the hot glue. So don't be scared to just use the hot glue. Um, but again, go ahead and feel um, what you feel you need to use. Go ahead and use that. So I attached both of my metal pieces to my home decor piece. And I just held it in place to make sure that it stayed where I wanted it and it was nice and dry flipped it over again made sure i drew those dots where i wanted them at now i just grabbed a screw and i drilled a hole in here but if you don't have a screwdriver um, you can use a hammer you can even use your hot glue gun maybe and um, kind of just start that opening right there and um, in order for you to attach the stand to your metal pieces just anything that you can drill a hole into that piece then you're going to insert your metal pieces into your stand and then you're going to measure out how much you want the stand how high you want it and then you're just going to bend the ends inwards like that and you're going to glue them to your stand now i made mine i want to say about eight inches in height from the stand to where my metal piece starts um, i didn't want it too high so again, these metal pieces that we did use are pretty long, so you can make it as high as you like. But I wanted to make sure that it stayed nice and sturdy. So I only did from my uh, metal piece to the actual stand itself is eight inches. So next, once you're done doing that and attaching your stand to your home decor piece, you're going to get some paint and a sponge brush, and you're going to start dabbing all these different color paints onto your metal piece what we're trying to do is make it look more metal and more rustic looking um, and what colors i use are the melted chocolate from apple barrel um, just a regular black paint and i also used a khaki from apple barrel as well um, and i just started playing with those three colors and just kind of sponging it all around the edges um, throughout my piece. I try to use darker pieces, uh, colors around where the attachments were at of each one of my metal strips, um, just to make it look like it was more worn out in that area, um, just to give it that farmhouse weather look. Um, but go ahead and just start stamping any colors you like, because you can even use white. You can use another color silver to do that galvanized if you want. Um, but it's up to you. Again, I just wanted it to look more farmhouse rustic looking. So um, this is what the colors I used. So just go ahead and continue stamping and adding the paint little by little. Don't um, add too much because then, then you're going to make yourself have more work towards the end. And you'll see what I mean when I say that. But just go ahead and continue stamping your colors until you're all happy with the way it looks. And then go ahead and paint the bottom of your stand. Now I decided to go ahead and paint mine black. Um, again, you can paint it any color. And I did paint those metal pieces as well black. And what you do to the front, make sure you do to the back of this home decor piece, just to give it more of that finished look. I'm only showing you what I did to the front with the stamped part of my paint, but I did do that to the back as well. And once you're done painting all your stands, um, just go ahead and allow this to completely dry. Now this piece is pretty big, so it's really, really um, a 
big piece uh, for your home. So it's one of those that you can use on its own or you can use it in a grouping. But once you're done and everything is nice and dry and paint, the paint's all nice and dry, go ahead and get some um, sandpaper. In my case, I'm using this sand block from Dollar Tree and just start sanding away that paint wherever you want just to give it more of that shinier look to remove some of the color so basically you're just going to go ahead and start removing some of the paint that you added on to your home decor piece and this is how i give it more of that older rustic uh, farmhouse look that i'm going for um, again you can eliminate this uh, part if you want and just leave it as is or just spray paint it all gold it's basically up to you but this is the way i'm making mine to make it more rustic farmhouse style so i just continued sanding it down until i was completely happy with the way it looked and remember to do the back as well and there you have it a beautiful farmhouse metal piece so for my next project, this is really easy and really simple to make. You're just going to need one of these um, burlap bags that you can get at Dollar Tree. And basically you can leave it as is, just remove the handle part and save that for another project. And you can just basically use it this way if you wanted to, depending on how big you want your flower pot to be. I'm just going to make like a potato sack flower pot bag. Um, I guess that's what you can call it. But I wanted to make it more of a smaller piece because I wanted it for um, that extra piece on your tear tray or just to give it that extra little pop of fall color and, you know, that small area. So I wanted to make them more of a smaller style. So what I did was just use the one without the print of my bag, that one side, and I cut it in half. So now what I'm going to do is just get my hot glue gun and make a bag by just gluing both sides. And then I'm going to flip over that burlap piece to make a bag. Just make sure you allow this to um, dry before you go to your next uh, part of this sec tutorial. And you're going to do the same to your next part. So basically you can get four of these home decor pieces for fall with one bag, um, just depending on your style or what you want to make the sizes. Um, again, these are kind of small, but this is what I wanted for um, my tear trays and what have you. So once they're all completely dry, what you're going to do is just get any kind of foam piece that you have. I just had these extra foam pieces um, in my stockpile and all I'm going to do is insert it into my bag. Now one thing, once I was done, I did notice that it would flop around. So what I had to do was basically open this up again and I added two marbles to the bottom of my bag in order for it to stay in place. So um, go ahead and make sure you put something in the bottom of this bag before you add your foam in order for it to stay and stand on its own. So once you do that, go ahead and you insert your foam and then you get what any kind of floral stem that you want and you're going to insert it into your bag. Then you're going to get any kind of ribbons you like. I'm using this um, ribbon from Dollar Tree and also the raffia yellow ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to tie a simple little knot in the front of my bag. This is great um, for that, like I said, those extra little places, maybe even in your office. I know a lot of you guys are not working in your offices right now, but you're working from home and your office is at home. So why don't you add a little bit of your fall just to give you some more of that festive feeling when you do um, sit at your office in your home or even at work um, or any area in your home that you just want that extra fall decor piece. So all I did was tie a little knot, cut off any of that extra ribbon, and there you have it. And here I'm going to do another one using um, the fall stem of the fall color leaves. Just to give it more of that pop of color. Again, just insert your foam piece, 
but don't forget to add something in the bottom, say a little cardboard box, or in my case, I just added two little marbles um, that are flat and glued them onto the bottom. Then on this one, all I did was cut off all the leaves from that stem and then I inserted them into my foam piece just to give it more of that fuller look and I wanted them all to kind of be in the same little bunch, I guess you could say, and all I did was just insert them in there and again, using the same ribbons, I just tied a knot around this bag. And I'm just splitting the raffia uh, ribbon just to make it look more fuller. And there you have it. Cute fall decor pieces. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and share with friends and family. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Here we do a lot of home decor, party theme pieces, um, all DIY, all on a budget. Until next time, you guys stay blessed. Bye.